The NBA playoffs are already getting to the final stages. And one thing we can say for sure is today's NBA is softer than baby powder. Whether it's the new age refereeing or the player's friendly attitude, fights are no longer part of the NBA playoffs. And this is exactly why Squad Dawkins is here as we bring you back the good old memories of the greatest brawls in NBA playoffs history. John Starks was an all-star at doing dumb things like getting the opposing team's best player amped. He did it with Reggie Miller, and he did it with Michael Jordan. Against the Bulls in the 1993 Eastern Conference Finals, he first got into it with Pippen and then went at Jordan a few times until the refs had enough and ejected him. Starks had already picked up a tech for kicking the ball in the stands after he turned the ball over. The Knicks lost the game and eventually the series, even though they had a 2-0 lead. John Stockton was one of the dirtiest players in NBA history. So dirty that 7'1 U.S. Naval Academy graduate David Robinson was too shook to fight Stockton in the 1994 Western Conference quarterfinals. It might be Robinson's Christian background had something to do with the fact that he stayed on the ground when Stockton tossed him to the floor, but it could not. Reggie Miller ushered in the era of flops. He was the master of getting under his opponent's skin and coaxing them into making irrational decisions based on emotion. Earlier during the 1993 season, Michael Jordan was suspended for a game because of a punch he threw at Miller. But later that season, John Starks would become his favorite target. In Game 3 of the Eastern Conference quarterfinals between the Knicks and the Pacers, Starks felt Reggie was throwing elbows all game and he wasn't having it. He purposely sought Miller out and headbutted him for it. Starks was ejected, the Knicks lost the game and John was fined $5,000. Houston Rockets' Ralph Sampson was a 7'4 giant, and in 1986 he pulled off one of the most idiotic moves in NBA Finals history. Sampson attacked the 6'1 Boston Celtics guard Jerry Sichting. The fight resulted in Sampson's ejection, though it served to fire up the Rockets, who went on to win the game going away to pull the series to 3-2. Boston prevailed to win in six, however, and Sampson's career was subsequently plagued by injuries. In 2007, as the Suns faced the championship experience Spurs in the Western Conference semifinals, everyone believed it was the Suns' last chance to win a title with their seven seconds or less up-tempo offense. Though Robert Horry was having none of it, the grizzled vet checked Steve Nash into the scorer's table as if they were in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Horry and Raja Bell tried to grab each other, but the scuffle was diffused quickly. Horry was suspended for two games and the Spurs went on to win the series in six games. The next year, Steve Kerr traded Sean Marion for Shaq and spelled the end of the Suns' original core in the desert. Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning never got along. The two had been beefing since the Hornets drafted Mourning with the second pick in the 1992 draft. It started when Zoe didn't like a contract offer from the Hornets, so he was dealt to the Heat. Johnson always held that against Alonzo, so when Larry became a Nick, it created the perfect storm. The tension reached a climax when the two met in the 1998 playoffs. With literally seconds left in the fourth quarter, Mourning didn't like how physical Johnson was getting for a board and took a swing at him. The two continued to fight the air until Jeff Van Gundy came in to save the day. Larry and Alonzo were each suspended for two games and fined a combined $32,500. Bill Lamebeer was known for his aggressive style of play, particularly on the defensive end of the court. He was a fierce rebounder and shot blocker, and was known to use his physicality to intimidate opponents. He was also known for his hard fouls and his willingness to get into altercations with other players. Everybody hated him. And in the 1987 conference finals against the Celtics, he showed why. During Game 3, Lamebeer put Larry Bird into a sleeper hold while Bird was attempting a layup. A flagrant foul was called and Bill was fined $5,000. Later in Game 5, Robert Parrish was fed up with Bill's antics and punched him three times in the head after Lame Beer came down with a rebound right in front of an official. At the time, only a foul was called on the Big Chief, but upon further review after the game, the league suspended Parrish for Game 6. The Pistons lost in seven games. In 1986, the Lakers were the reigning NBA champs. The Rockets were the young guns with the Twin Towers, Ralph Sampson and the young Hakeem the Dream, gunning for that number one spot. Houston was up in the Western Conference Finals Series 3-1 and about to send the Lakers packing on their home court when Mitch Kupchak objected to a swipe from Hakeem and hit the Dream with an arm check. 
Hakim definitely objected to the arm check and swung on Kupchak with the quickness, only to have referee Earl Strom put his life on the line to break things up. If Strom was six inches taller, the Rockets likely don't win their back-to-back -back titles in the 90s because the dream would have been locked up on an involuntary manslaughter charge. The Kevin McHale and Kurt Rambis incident might be the most famous takedown in NBA history. It occurred during Game 4 of the 1984 NBA Finals, as McHale straight clotheslined Rambis, which led to the clearing of benches. This was a mere personal foul in the 80s, but surely would have gotten someone tossed in today's NBA. No one was suspended or fined. That was just vintage basketball. Boston won the game in the series in seven. Knicks Charlie Ward took boxing out seriously. And in Game 5 of the 1997 Eastern Conference Semifinals, he damn near took Heat's P.J. Brown's legs from under him, which made P.J. angry beyond belief. Brown was so annoyed that he flipped Charlie with one arm like he was a little kid. Allen Houston, Patrick Ewing, and Charlie Ward were suspended for Game 6, while Larry Johnson and John Starks were out for Game 7. P.J. was out for both. The Heat ended up winning the series, overcoming a 3-1 deficit with the aid of the Knicks' suspensions. This next brawl broke out only a few rows from Commissioner David Stern, which led to the leave the bench rule. Before this fight, players who left the bench were fined. The next season, players who left the bench were automatically suspended for one game. In Game 3 of the 1994 Eastern Conference Semifinals, Knicks Derek Harper took Bulls Jojo English uptown and slammed him on his back into the front row. Harper was suspended for two games and Jojo was out for one. Each player was fined $20,000. In Game 3 of the 1983 Eastern Conference quarterfinals, Tree Rollins was called a sissy by Denny Ainge. In retaliation, Rollins elbowed Ainge in the face. Never one to back down, Ainge tackled Rollins to the ground and the two began to wrestle. Tree then bit Ainge's middle finger requiring a couple stitches. The crazy part? Ainge was ejected and not Tree. The Celtics went on to win the series 2-1. You know you've choked a man good when the gum flies out of his mouth. In 1994, the eighth-seeded Heat were appearing in the playoffs for the first time in franchise history and coming off the first postseason win in franchise history. Not feeling the upstart Heat beating them again on their own court, the Hawks got chippy, and when Atlanta's Dwayne Farrell put his finger in Miami's Grant Long's face after a dunk, things got really chippy. Long calmly removed his goggles and put both hands on Farrell's neck, resulting in the aforementioned gum expulsion. Both benches cleared, with Miami's Keith Askins and Atlanta's Doug Edwards landed punches. Long and Askins were suspended for Game 3, Atlanta won the series in five games. This next fight involved two legends in Daryl Dawkins and Maurice Lucas, who were known to throw the hands every once in a while. As the Trailblazers and 76ers matched up in Game 2 of the 1977 NBA Finals, Dawkins and Bob Gross battled for a rebound and had some words. Gross must have said the magic words to Dawkins, so Daryl popped him but hit his own teammate Doug Collins instead. Lucas slapped Daryl in the back of the head and challenged him to shoot the one. This led to fans trying to get on the floor to get in the action, and players on both teams had shoving matches. Both Lucas and Dawkins were ejected, and Dawkins was fined $2,500, no suspensions. The Blazers lost the game, but went on to win the series in six games. Tell us in the comments what is your favorite vintage NBA brawl. And if you enjoy this video, hit the like button, share, and subscribe. For even more basketball content, subscribe to our other channels, Free Dawkins and Vintage Dawkins, and follow us on social media.